The last thing I want to examine in this chapter about the equipment is shutter speed. That's the light to the film. And one last time, we have technical information. So, what is shutter speed? It's how long the lens stays open, but the right shutter speed, if it's faster, can reduce the chances of camera shake. It can reduce the chances of subject motion blur, assuming you're using a fast shutter speed. If you slow it down, it can permit the use of a smaller f-stop aperture. It can reduce the need of carrying a tripod because you're using faster shutter speeds, I suppose. It will help with faster shutter speeds to freeze motion in action images. And if you use lower shutter speeds, it permits shooting in lower light levels. But don't forget, we're also combining all the other aspects of what we've done here. Now take a look at this. The image on the left and then the image on the right. Can you tell me which one was taken at a slower shutter speed? Same area, probably two minutes between the two photographs. I think you know. The one on the left had an ISO, that's the speed of the film of 100. The f-stop was 3.3 and the shutter speed was 1 50th of a second, enough to freeze the action in the water. I wanted that soft kind of like blurred effect on waterfalls. ISO is the same. F-stop is down because I've got to use a larger shutter speed, so I have to reduce light somehow, and I did it by looking at my light meter, and it said if I used a 7.7, .7, I could go to a shutter speed of one quarter of a second, which produced the image that you see. If you're looking for those really soft waterfall photographs, I love doing those, all you have to do is remember you're going to take a long exposure. So you either need to really bring down your ISO, which is a good thing, or maybe even stop the lens down. So less light is coming in and you'll be able to achieve those very same effects. So what's the trade-off here? There's always a trade-off, right? Shutter speed basically controls the amount of light hitting the film. We know that. Slow shutter speeds can create dramatic special effects like our waterfall. Or people moving in front of the lens and you want it to appear as if they're moving quickly. Timed exposures. Another thing about a camera, make sure it has a bulb shutter speed. When I was younger, I worked at an observatory, as a teenager, actually. We took exposures of the night sky that lasted three, four hours. Timed exposures on digital cameras are really not that much different, but you need the ability to open the lens and leave it open. So see if your camera does have actually something called a bulb shutter speed, which means on as long as you've got the button pushed down. I would mention one more thing here. If you're doing those kind of exposures, you need a remote release for the camera so you're not touching the camera when you actually open the shutter. That way it won't shake. Fast shutter speeds. Well, they freeze action. But in doing fast shutter speeds, you got to have a lot of light because you have less light hitting the film. And they do help with the sharpness of the image. Now that's it. As far as I'm concerned, they are the three things that we use. Shutter speed, ISO, and f-stop. Perfect photographs are done by combining those three things. And it's going to take practice, it's going to take looking at other people's stuff. But now that we're done with this, in the following chapters, we're going to see how that relates to how we work in Photoshop. Photoshop for photographers. Here we go.